If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. We got a little something special today, dude. We went in the vault. Yeah. We went back in the vault and got a episode that we forgot about. It's a one-year anniversary. It's it's a year old. We totally forgot about this episode, never aired it. Which, and, by and- the way, motherfuckers, keep in mind, that's... Uh, almost 400 episodes ago, so I like to think that we're a little more refined, so fucking be nice here a little bit. So Dude. We're not, we're not as sharp. Bro, I was... <laughs> so when Doug sent us the file, he's like, hey, here's an old episode. What do you guys want to do with this? I was listening to it, and I was pissing my pants the entire time. Well, was- I said, we got to play this. I'm like, I think... I mean, hopefully... I, I mean, I know it's nice to stay current, but this is nice. It's football Sunday. Super Bowl's going on right now, so a lot of people will be watching that. We thought this would be a cool time to drop an old episode that we did that we've never re- released before. Hopefully everybody enjoys it. But uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Dude, it's a funny throwback. It's hilarious. We do talk about mobility in there. Yeah. That's one of the main topics. But it's just classic mind pump banter. So it's, it's we're having a great time with it. So we hope you enjoy this episode. Also, I do want to say a couple things. Uh, last month, we had a huge promotion. People were enrolling in all of our programs like crazy. This month, we still have the bundles, just like we did last month. You could do the Super Bundle, which is a year long right. of exercise programming. We have the Prime Bundle, which uh, this episode talks about mobility. The Prime Bundle is designed specifically for mobility and correctional exercise. We still have that on our site. And we have a couple other bundles that combine our other programs together. And we have individual programs. Here's the thing. A lot of people have questions. Which program is the best for me? Which one, you know, needs this kind of equipment? Can I do this in a home gym? Can I do this at home? Can I do this, you know, how many days a week? All those questions can be answered for you on our website, mindpumpmedia.com. Just click on the program, watch the video where I break it down. We also did a great video on YouTube. So if you guys aren't following our YouTube, Mind Pump TV, we just recently closed out the 30 days of fitness with Mind Pump where we actually created a calendar for you guys and a free workout with mobility days every day. And then at the end of it, we had so many questions about where to go from there and more detail about the programs and basically what what avatar fits which one of our programs. So if you've been thinking about getting one of the programs for a long time and you want to explain it in a little bit more depth, uh, you can go to the YouTube channel, look at one of the last videos. I'll have Jackie because Jackie does the show notes. I'll have her put a link in the in the show notes for you guys where you guys can go directly to that video and watch that detail. Excellent. So without any further ado, uh, enjoy classic mind pump. Here you go. What are we gonna do around here to get an upgrade here? What's going on? Wow, it's it's interesting. Actually, how I, yours yours is different than mine and Justin's. It no. is because we know mm. who the, you two are the favorite. It's spotted you are yeah. you are for sure at least. I don't think mm. we're so much the favorites as you're the least favorite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like <laughs> the outcast. Like, it's not more, like hey, I like them the most. It's more like I, I like, like this guy the least. The least. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different. <laughs> for it's us. all that harassment like you put Doug through all day. Yeah, who's the one that invented the phrase? God damn it, Doug! <laughs> yeah, it's become a meme everywhere. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a catch. It's Adam's damn catch it, phrase. Doug. God damn it! Anything that happens. Oh yeah. fuck! It's raining outside. God damn, damn it, Doug. it, Doug! Yeah, mm. people are starving in Africa. God damn it, Doug! It's Doug! Damn it! <laughs> damn it! Everybody needs a Fall Guy. Yeah. Hey, do you guys ever watch that show? What's that? Wow, that was an old school show, The Fall Guy. The Fall Guy. You remember that shit? I was like, I don't he had, heard the title. He I don't had, remember it at all. So it was like. I didn't. I watched it as a kid, so I probably interpreted it wrong. So I have no fucking idea. What, oh, <laughs> yeah. I remember what it was about. He was a stunt guy. Oh, that was okay. his job. But then he kind of uh, like fought crime and shit. I think. I was think. this during the like the Magnum PI kind of era? Yeah, but he had this like sick like pickup truck, and he would always at every episode he'd jump something with it. It was like <laughs> what? Whoa. Yeah, yes. yeah. It was like the. Uh, Were we kids when was dude, this? that? Was like the golden era of TV. Then you had like Airwolf. And oh, had, like, all, like fucking 18 the and all that Airwolf. shit. Bro, the dude, 18 was, was the business. Bro, Airwolf was the fucking big dick of yeah. military I actually cool was, shit. I was actually <laughs> thinking about <laughs> getting us a... <laughs> Best song. Yeah. Best song ever. Yeah. How did you remember that? Because I remember every little fucking stupid But what they did jingle. is they... Sal has a photographic memory for science studies. <laughs> <laughs> Justin remembers commercials. I remember all commercial, all TV. Like, <laughs> but uh, like that's the song. Media. That was a song. Dun, yeah. dun, he, dun, could, dun, he couldn't be dun, more dun, any more like my best friend Justin. That's what we call him Sports Center because he remember like the guy just remembers the most random yeah. fucking numbers and facts. Well, and so like, here's the thing like, about... Yeah. You apply that Too bad all my you, shit is useless. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, could you apply that to something that makes us millions of dollars, Well, you know what? Maybe I am right now. So Let's put him on a game show. 
What if I know we should? That's actually. so. Let me ask. You, Airwolf again. I was young. What was the premise? Like they had this badass I helicopter and they fought crime with it. Pretty it seems much. excessive. Yeah. Yeah. It was that one. It was the uh, crazy one, right? The crazy copter that yeah, was yeah, hella fast, and it yeah. had freaking the mini guns on it. In, yeah. Did it have missiles or mini guns? Everything. It had everything yeah, it had on all it. All that shit. It was. It was. That was the era of like super it, because because Night Rider. It was right? all about helicopters, dude. Because even Magnum PI, he had that buddy that had a helicopter. It just seems just excessive. Up, you know, it seems AC excessive to me. Or whatever. His like name if was. you're fighting regular crime, you're like oh shit. Yeah, but you need There's a helicopter. A, that guy's mugging yeah. that person over there. And a fast car. Get the Airwolf, yeah. which is a military bait. You know, it's a, it's a fucking... You got missiles. Yeah, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Well, don't you oh, think... Oh, shit, you just blew up the whole city. Don't shoot some shit. Don't you think that was kind of the beginning of the era of, like, where we... Like, a lot of TV... Um, you need a van. When you think about a lot of, like, our TV shows, like, even, like, the Westworld, a lot of them are based on, like... Real stuff that's going on that we just not a lot of people know about. You Maybe, know? Yeah, they take they take a little bit of it and then yeah, they expand. Be like that. Yeah, yeah like, of course. Like Airwolf, there's probably not a guy who did like what he did in the show, right? It wasn't <laughs> as cheesy as that. Yeah. But they take from some, you yeah, know, they probably had like stealth helicopters. Yeah, we just didn't know about it. Yeah, of course yeah. they did. Well, I think of course the technology was around by then. So look, where, look where we're at now, dude. So that's those what are, everybody thinks is aliens. It's just fucking advancing technology. So those are '80s shows, and the '80s was the era of it was like the end of. The the cold, it was towards the end of the Cold War. It was about like big time militarization, like big guns. It was fucking Schwarzenegger and mm -hmm. Stallone and blowing shit and up. Huge and so it just, fucking muscles. Yeah, it spilled over into TV, I think. And so that you had the A team who had that fucking mini, that van. Dude, I'm getting yeah. us that van. Dude. No, you're not. Tell me, how would you guys like? like we just sick. went to a, last night we went to a seminar. It's how dope would it have been if we would have rolled up yeah. to Lululemon and came out of our black <laughs> A team fucking van? Just oh. roll out. Tell me people would not be yeah. like, holy shit. But it, I want to also. Justin would have chain, gold chains yeah. all over yeah. him. Oh, would he be I Mr. Have, T? Like, yeah. strapped like fake grenades. Pretty all sure over he me. would be Mr. You know T. Know I mean? You'd be, you can't do that anymore. I pity the fool. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> I pity the fool. Yeah. Calm down. Well, I wouldn't have to like paint my skin or anything. I would just like have like hair. You know, that was crazy. I wouldn't do anything <laughs> crazy like that. You're, 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 racist. You're, 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 I wouldn't do that. You come out blackface. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't get away with that just, kind of shit. I'm just trying to be Mr. This T. This is not okay. I'm the man yeah. behind the man. No. It's not okay. <laughs> well, you, I don't yeah. know how the hell he got away with that. What do you mean? That uh, was epic. That, Tropic it was comedy. Because yeah. it was comedy. Yeah, no, yeah. it was great. Yeah, no. It's just, nah, I was we're, glad he We're did. technically in the funny. comedy. Aren't we? Aren't we? Right, Doug? We're in the comedy and, right? Fitness. Fitness and comedy. That's right. We do that to cover our ass. That way we can, <laughs> yeah. That way we can get away. Yeah, with that way we can we say want. some bullshit. Pee the foo. Yeah, I do want to van told like you that. guys. We were comedy but, first, fitness second. But besides missiles and shit, I would also like in the back a rotating bed inside oh. the van. Oh wow! Whoa. Now that's yeah, that's special. Haven't with, you ever wanted with mirrors to, like on the ceiling? Maybe. Haven't you yeah. ever wanted to do it in a moving car? It, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That that would get crazy. Exactly. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see like it's all bumping around and yeah. then you're in the yeah. back. Who's doing driving? It. It's lots of core stability. You know what I mean? A lot of stuff going on. You gotta oh. trust you gotta trust the driver. Can people see inside? I don't know. It's exciting. You know what I mean? <laughs> all those factors yeah, I feel like would make it a, a van that you had sex in yeah. while it was driving. Isn't there a porn that if you didn't know like Sal's a freak Sounds category? Yeah. Unsafe. Mm -hmm. Sounds very yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm, someone else is driving. You'd be stabbing that's not you know things. It's an example of not safe sex. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's an example. Of. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey, Adam, how did you break your dick? Well, <laughs> I was having sex in the in the team van. Yeah. <laughs> the Doug drove over a speed bump. Yeah, we were in San Francisco. We <laughs> oh, hit a bump. Oh, oh yeah. ouch! Yeah. Snapped it right in half. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's not even funny. Why is that? You can't it's make like a pogo. Stick. Why can't we make dick jokes like that without everybody going? Ooh. Oh, because we know ooh. that would hurt. Dude. We were Katrina and I were just at a movie. We just saw. Uh, can you really break your dick? Is that, yeah. Is that possible? Yes, you can. That was weird the way I said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was oh my god! Yeah. So certain. It's like, it's like he's like three times for me actually. It's like it's, it's like I'm I went, so glad you asked. It's like I went backwards in puberty. Like I'm gonna go yeah. back. <laughs> no, yeah, you definitely can break your dick. For wow. sure. Wow. Yeah, there's I cases. Wanna see, I want to see pictures. You, you, oh, you hear a snap. Of. You hear a snap. Ooh. Massive bl uh, uh, internal bleeding uh, and bruising. Can we, stop, can we change the subject, please? And then, yeah, but it's not. It's like and then you get not a, even a bone. Uh, but you can break the, the, the tissue. It's the, What is the oh, tissue I called? Ah, oh, fuck. I don't remember. Mm. It's, not the, it's not the corpus callosum. That's in the brain. Mm. But anyway. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, getting your heads mixed up. It yeah. snaps. And then, and then I think many times you're penis then is misshapen wow well now you so make, now you, you have think, a I crooked if, you have you a boomerang get, like some boomerang scar tissue build like up that. it could probably add an inch to it or so 
circumference wise. This I could don't be know. a strategy for some people. Just repeatedly the, the break your neck. swelling so would be insane. I was, I was starting to tell you guys we were in the theater. Katrina and I just watched. It was before we watched Founder, right? So I told you guys we went and saw Founder, Ray Kroc, but it was another movie we watched, and it wasn't a good movie, but some, uh, there was a scene where the guy gets just from behind comes up and just kicks gets kicked in the dick like full everything <laughs> right and it was so funny because the whole theater all the men <laughs> at the, like this like a perfect perfect timing it's like and a harmony katrina starts like, laughing one, two, three, she goes oh my god did you hear all the men like yeah. every like you know it's like it's scene everyone's in the scene right this is action scene oh, who, 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 and then and then the scene comes with the guy gets kicked in the, oh, <laughs> the whole audience at one like That's it was awesome. like all at one time it it's like, because and they say men are empathetic we're empathizing only, yes, we, only for that Ooh. we can feel you know it, it, girls hurt too when they get kicked in the front butt it hurts him too. The front, front butt? Front yeah. Butt. Did you, you just call that? vaginas front butt? I call, it never, I call it the cooter. You never heard of that term, the front yeah, butt? Cooter punch. Yeah, you can, if they get kicked there hard, it hurts too. There's a lot of nerves there. You can get them a fat lip. It's not good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Bet, wow. Yeah, so you don't want to kick anybody in the groinish area. Although they have those kung fu masters. Have you seen the videos? Mm-hmm. Where they can, uh, they can somehow summon their chi and just repeatedly receive blows to the dick <laughs> and handle it yeah somehow. what is that all about i've seen those videos where there's like a dude and he's like <sighs> and then they'll go by and they'll hit him in the back with a two by four boom two by yeah. four they'll hit him in the head and boom it breaks it two. and then he kicks the nuts the, the last move someone comes up and just blasts him in the dick <laughs> several times you never seen these videos and yeah. the guy's just chilling I, think I have yeah have you ever have you ever been in a fight where someone's hit you and kicked you in the dick or anything like they're punched you in the dick before uh no i, I had some guy trying to twist mine off that sucks i did that wow yeah. <laughs> you twisted a guy's dick. yeah yeah, yeah. i was in the bottom of a yeah. rugby scrum this guy's fucking just argh, just squeezing the shit out of my nuts did he I, really oh yeah i had just like punch my way out i was punching and scratching my way out dude god damn it man. was horrible and but you actually did do that i remember yeah. you said some guy got on top of you yeah yeah he was a wrestler i mean wrestler guy get on top of me i'm not a wrestler in fact, first thing i did was grab his dick <laughs> real quick i was on top <laughs> real quick that is the move it you, is yeah. yeah i remember every there's like a group of people that were of course you know, there's always a bunch of you know people standing by cheering fights on when fights happen mm -hmm. uh and i remember everyone going oh you just oh you can't do that you I'm can't like, do that oh, look, this is a you fight bro I'm, I'm trying to live right now <laughs> to do what <laughs> rules i'm just gonna rules if you, you know what's funny <laughs> if, about rules. if you think rules of, in a street yeah. fight if you think no, about no it thing. if you think about it if you're in a street fight and your primary like your number one go-to moves are i'm gonna pick three moves you ready okay kick them in the dick yes number bite, one bite Yep. Yeah. Bite and poke in the eyes. Uh -huh. You're probably going to win. Yeah. yeah. You're guaranteed to win. All great sure. strategies. And I and the funny thing is, I've never. Those are the use last. Dirt. Thi yeah, yeah. Those are the I last things that I would think to in use in a fight because immediately I'm thinking punch, jujitsu. But the reality is, I should just bite the motherfucker and yeah, kick him in the absolutely. nuts. Absolutely. And like eat a piece of his face off, punch, kick him in the nuts, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then you'll win. Yeah, every time. God, just, this is just act really crazy. We well, talk about paradigm well, you shifting. You saw those guys that just take their pants off. And then everybody's like, ah, no, I don't and watch, then they run away. I don't watch that video. Oh, that would be pretty funny, too. Getting ready to get a no, fight that, and then get naked no, really it totally quick. works. Yeah. Could you imagine? Like, oh, this guy's crazy. Could ah. you imagine being in like a bar or a situation like that with all this testosterone ego going, and fuck just, you, no, fuck you, man, and push each other back and forth, and you're like, oh, yeah, and you just get naked? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm ready. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ready, motherfucker? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Either He's too ready. If you get naked, they'll probably won't want to fight you, or if you just take a shit. Those two things right there are probably guaranteed to avoid a fight. There you go. I don't know anybody. It's another great strategy. I don't think there's anybody in the world that will want to fucking tussle with you when you've shit yourself. No. Everybody's like, I'm cool. Yeah. Get over here and tussle with me. Yeah. Who wants to tussle with me? I don't want none of that tussle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that a real word or did I just make that uh, up? It's a, it's a good word, actually. Tussle? Yeah, yeah tussle. Tussle. It sounds better like, than fight. It sounds like, like a tussle. fight. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a... Like a yeah. Like you guys it's kind of like Southwest. You could tussle with your lady, too, though. Tussle? Yeah. Getting into a tussle this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could tussle with your lady in a, a treasure trove of flowers. A treasure trove. <laughs> Adam. You know what? You know what Adam did earlier? Gave her a treasure trove. Adam, and then we got into a big old tussle. Adam took some nootropics and his verbal fluency has just improved. <laughs> he's, he's used several words now that's never he's his trove. I've been dying to put trove somewhere. <laughs> uh, I figured I'd combine it with that one. See, it's kind of like betrothed. Does it you know work? I mean, like, because we're. Yeah, anyway. I just thought of a good Instagram handle now. 
if you're like if you're like one of those chicks that wrestles and dudes and it's kind of like those fetish things you could call yourself like tussle with muscle or something like that <laughs> tussle with muscle yeah muscle tussle <laughs> muscle I bet you that's tussler. already taken someone's done that already let's hashtag muscle and tussle. find out what's going let's on try. How'd you guys, let's get new a muscle tussle how'd you guys like the seminar last night at uh at Lemon. Lululemon. 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 Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, I have to say that was probably, um, Katrina was asking me like my assessment of it when we left and she goes, what do you think? What do you think? She was all nervous because she was like, I felt like, you know, it was, there wasn't, I was really disappointed. I wish there was more people there. And I thought, well, you know, I actually, I thought it was a decent showing considering where we're at. I mean, that was a small setting to try and fit a hundred plus people in there. So I said, uh, you know, I don't think it could get more challenging of a group of people for us to talk to. It was a run, running runners yeah. group. Yeah, it was a runners group. And I they're think, immediately well, looking at us and yeah. and they're thinking like right away. Like, yeah, who, who right are away. These, like, who are these assholes? Uh, Meat yeah. jocks. Nobody. No, <laughs> literally, yeah, like man. nobody. I mean, there's like a handful of people that actually lift weights. Everybody <laughs> else are avid runners. Some of them were ultra marathon runners. They were running group. The only group I could think of that could be more challenging talking to would be possibly a CrossFit group. I, don't, I, I actually I think, it'd think it would be easier. I think it would be easier. Yeah, I think it would be easier too. At least they lift. Exactly. That's so. I, yeah. That's why I said I don't. That's why I told Katrina. I said I think that went the best it possibly could because nobody left. We didn't yeah. anyway. Uh Quite a few people looked very interested. I, I had a lot of people stay afterwards. I, I saw you guys, but we were all busy talking to a line of people afterwards. So. Yeah. Uh, we definitely struck a chord. I think that I think they I were went surprised. Back and got more whiskey. <laughs> I think they were surprised that we knew what we were talking about because I think they looked. Oh, that at was us. the most common thing yeah. that uh, uh, Michelle and everybody came up and told me afterwards. Like, hey, those guys were really smart. Yeah. <laughs> this is automatic, right? We get judged. Well, right either away. we're really smart or we just exceeded their expectations. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's more a step above. Yeah, 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 the initial it's impression. The, it's not hard when you. Maybe that's the you know that works to our advantage. Yeah. Looking like a bunch of dumb meatheads. Oh, we it's come like, in like yeah. with a very low standard. Exactly. You know I mean? <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a it's great like, strategy. I barely to, even shaved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's true. I mean, I mean, yeah, we appear super smart just because you know, we, we yeah, look the way we do and we're, we're, in the we're, a bunch of idiots, and we're in the right? fitness industry. <laughs> yeah. If we were all, that's we, what's going for us. If we were all neurobiologists, we'd be idiots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name's Sal. I'm a neurobiologist. After glasses. I'm done, like, God, he's way dumber than I thought he was. For a neurobiologist, he's a retard. Yeah. But for but I got a, a lab coat. But yeah. for Come a meathead on. trainer, I'm a fucking genius. Yeah, that's right. I had a good time. With, we dude, know what we're doing. I had a great time there um, <clears throat> talking to people. Here's what the thing about Lululemon. It's definitely not. It's definitely not my typical scene. And here's a lesson that I've learned last night with mm. Lululemon. Tell us. I learned a very, mm. very good lesson. Because even as much as I try not to uh, get a, a uh, you know preconceived notion about a place or people or whatever. There still lingers. There's still this little bit that'll happen. And what I mean is, I went in there, we did our thing, it was great, and then she's like, hey, I'm going to give you guys 40% off Lululemon clothes. I never buy Lululemon clothes because to me, Lululemon just seems for girls. You know what I'm saying? It just kind of <laughs> seems for girls. It seems like it's it's a little bit, it's yoga-ish, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that, but it just doesn't seem like something that I'd want to wear. Because I had that preconceived notion. Well, I tried on some of their clothes, and I'm wearing some of their sweats right now. Let me tell you something right now. Fucking sexy. <laughs> They're comfortable. No, we gave you compliments uh, coming in, rocking them. They got good clothes, like really, really good, high quality stuff, and it's really it looks really good. So yeah. I'm I, I'm mad that I never really <clears throat> took them seriously. Yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed. They're it's a little tough though. I mean, their their sizes are. They're, it's hard. They're not. Uh, they're not quite yeah. designed for me. Like, they haven't you're, quite made it into the meat market yet. You yeah. I mean? Like, the, they're, like they're the most of the stuff I have to wear from there is like double skinny. XL, because their XL is kind of like a. I mean, you're wearing they sell double XL. They do, but the double XL just gets wider. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah, mm. They think you're just fat. Yeah. It's you know exactly. It's they're a like, double, double XL. Either you're double. one of us or you're fat. If you've ever put like if you've ever shopped and you put like <laughs> a. An XL shirt and a double XL shirt, like lay them over the top it's of each other. It's not longer, it's just wider. Yeah, it's just wider. So that's the frustrating part for a guy like me is I don't need it. In fact, it could be a, a large as far as how narrow it is. I need it to be longer so mm. I, it doesn't turn into a belly, so you're sh more belly a, shirt when I do overhead you're more presses. Of a, you're more of a not so much of a width person, you're more of a length person <laughs> with clothes yeah, dude. We're, 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 talking about my, we're talking about my shirts right yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, god damn yeah that's true you know it's interesting we talked a lot of, so we're obviously talking to a group of uh, runners and we figured god what the best thing we could possibly talk about with these people 
that they'd probably be interested in would be uh, one rep max powerlifting. Just kidding. We <laughs> yeah. talked about we talked about <laughs> priming their body before priming and mobility. I told you we should have just started off like flexing and doing a whole routine. Yeah. What Next I wanted time. what I wanted to say is I was going to introduce everybody and I was going to introduce myself, Adam, and then I was going to say and I'd also like to welcome mm. Justin Andrews, mm-hmm. the world's heaviest ultra marathon runner. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see what they'd say. <laughs> oh my god! I wish you would have done that. You know what? Next time I'll wear a medal and we'll, we'll totally go with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I won this medal. I wonder how many people. How many yeah. people the world, I'm in the the world's I'm fattest in ultra marathon the world record. <laughs> the heaviest like, fucking this ultra marathon. This doesn't record. add up. To give you guys context, uh, the normal you can ultra, hear him yeah, miles away. The average good marathon douche, runner would need to carry two other marathon runners <laughs> in order to equal the girth and weight. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. like a seven day challenge. You have to eat somebody to finish. Yeah. Right? So, but anyway, so, uh, no, but we talked a lot about mobility and stuff. And we talked about, uh, at one point, Adam, you were talking about squatting, sitting in a squat, getting yeah. into a squat. Great. You know, it's, it's been a while since we kind of went down this road. I think it was last year, uh, mid last year, we went on this little kick where, Every every other episode or so, we were uh, doing just on like a body part or, and you know, I remember that we all had great feedback, and we said, you know what, we need to make sure that we still visit some of the basics because you know we get so caught up in all like the new cutting edge science or what's new here and what's new there and like you know the the competitive edge of everything, and it's like you know what, so many people neglect. Uh, the basics and or totally just don't understand the importance of it and understand that focusing on that and uh, mastering that will benefit us so much more than all these other little things that we talk about or people ask ask questions about getting the competitive edge. So much more. Well, when you think about the squat, uh, and we're not talking about working out with squats, um, although those are obviously also squats. We're just talking about just being able to get into a full Sit down, On feet command. are flat. Yeah, feet yeah. are flat. You're, you've got good posture. You're comfortable squat position. Uh, you know, the, some people call it, and I don't necessarily like this name because it's a little, uh, I find it a little offensive, but they call it the third third world squat where you see people who sit in a squat and they'll, yeah. you know, they'll pick rice. Well, it's like a resting position. Right. I mean, for most of the rest of the world. What, people don't, kinda... reala- <laughs> what people don't realize is that it is a uh, very, very basic, normal, natural part of human function and in modern societies we've eliminated it out of our day because when we sit we sit in chairs mm. when we poop we poop on a toilet that's a chair we never squat we never do anything in that bottom position <clears throat> and we completely lose our ability to do something that our bodies are completely designed that are, that are designed or have evolved to do and if you don't believe me the average toddler the average toddler who learns how to walk can sit in a squat. And in fact, when they play, many times they do sit in a squat. It's something we're, we're designed to do, just like walking or standing. But because we never do it anymore, we've lost that ability. And along with losing that ability, we lose a lot of the benefits of being able to sit in that position, that comfortable position. And I'll use myself as an example. I mean, here I am, a guy that works out consistently, has, been, has done so for a very, very long period of time. <clears throat> And uh, I lost my ability to sit in a squat. Now, I could do a barbell squat, and I can get down to parallel and maybe even a little below parallel. And for me, that was my, that was my assessment of a squat. Like, can I squat slightly below parallel with heavy weight? I'm cool. I'm happy. I can do this. But as we started getting deeper and deeper into human movement and mobility, and uh, you know, especially watching uh, you know your progress, Adam, with uh, with being able to sit into a squat and then working with Dr. Brink, and here I am, I can't fucking do it. Like I can't sit in a squat. Why can't I sit in a squat? This is like something I should be able to do. Part of me was like almost in disbelief. Like my, there's, I think there's something wrong with my hips. I just can't get down there. I feel like something's locking up. I feel like just it doesn't work. And then going through testing and finding that I actually do have that range of motion when I'm laying on the floor. It's just when I'm standing, I can't get into a squat. And now I've been practicing over the last, I'd say, three or four months. And now I can finally sit in a squat. It's not comfortable, but I can do it. And I made such it's huge a big improvement, dude. huge improvement yeah. over the last three we months. Recognized it. And, um, and I'm noticing the benefit in other exercises and stuff that I'm doing. And it just really uh, solidifies just how important that fucking position is. Yeah. Like, it's so important to be able to get into a squat and just sit into a well, squat. We're made for it. 
Yeah. We're totally made for it. In fact, uh, there's that Squatty Potty uh, product, which is actually quite popular, which is basically a step stool that you put your feet on when you're sitting on the toilet. I give kudos to On It for having them in their uh, bathroom stalls. That <laughs> oh, that's right. Cool. When we went to On It, they had yeah. a little Squatty Potty. And what it does is it puts you in this squat nice, position powerful shits. because that posterior pelvic tilt is actually quite beneficial to being able to uh, to, to poop. And that humans probably sat in that position to poop. Women giving birth probably sat in that position giving birth. And now in hospitals, they yeah. include these like little uh, harnesses or whatever. These uh, like well, they grips. have. I remember that because when my wife was like initially, because everything that she's done has been so like clinical and, and medical based uh, because she works in a hospital and everything. So she really wanted to kind of go outside of that and research more about like natural ways Thank God we didn't do like a natural birth at home or something crazy like that. But uh, pretty much like you utilized a lot of those different positions and techniques and squats and all these kinds of things. And we had like a doula come to kind of help uh, with the process of that, which I thought was really cool. And uh, but, yeah, there was a lot of uh, natural positions like that that helped to kind of move things along if you use your did, body. Did, oh, so she was she gravity. did the standing and squatting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did she – now, how did she – when it was time to deliver your kids, did she do the uh, the epidural? No. So she didn't do anything? No. <clears throat> how did she deliver the baby on her back? Was she standing? Um. Well, she kind of started in a lot of different positions and then okay. ended up on her back. But, okay, yeah. so she was moving to get it going and then yeah. she actually went on her back. Yeah, exactly. Wow. This that's... is making Adam really uncomfortable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, one of the things to keep in mind is when, you're, when we're talking about this is we need to differentiate between range of motion and controlled range of motion. Right. Because those are two two very big things, you know what I'm saying. So uh, I don't know if you want to get get into a little bit of that. Well, you know, I think something too that I I noticed because this was something that uh, I think the way you feel right now, I remember going through this in this last year. It's been it's been life changing for me, it really has. Um, I've been somebody who's battled with low back pain for years and years and years, and it was the reason why I didn't squat. And anytime I, I would squat, man, my, my low back would just light on fire. And then I would avoid it for a while. Then I'd revisit it and I'd be like, God, I just, I, no joke. I would do a couple sets and anything over five plus reps, I'd be laying on the floor and my low back would just be on fire. And so I just justified not doing them. And it was, and I, you know, I heard brain last night talk about that. And that's this people go like, you know, uh, stop squatting because the the squat hurts them. And it's like, no, the squat didn't hurt me. And the mm-hmm. squat's not what's hurting me. It's my mechanics are what's hurting me. You hurt you. Yeah, I hurt me. And, you know, once I started looking at it like that, and then we started addressing all the issues I had that was keeping me from able to go down all the way into a baby position, I started to uh, notice relief in the in my low back and I was sleeping better. All my other movements became better. And it, it isn't so much... Uh, that the squat relieved all that. It's all the work I had to put in to get to where I could squat full range of motion. So the, you know, opening up the hips and working on my ankle mobility, that's what relieved all this pressure that I had in the whole hip complex that was bothering my low back so much. Mm-hmm. And it really, it's it wasn't a lot of hard work. It was just a lot of consistent Mm-hmm. things that I needed to apply to my my day like and I think once that kind of light bulb went off for me that hey I don't need to do these like long stretching sessions or go you know, enroll in some yoga class I need to find a couple of these moves that are are making an impact and opening my hips up mm-hmm. and I just need to just do them as much yeah. as I possibly you know, god damn you know what I'm it's it's so true with all types of learning, and I want to be very clear before I forget this. This kind of just popped up in my mind, one of those epiphanies on how you can communicate certain things. And we got to keep in mind it's very important to communicate things in different ways because people – one of those ways might resonate with someone and they'll finally fucking get it. And here's just something that just really strongly resonated with me is that you're not training your body. You're not you know, trying to improve flexibility through doing all these different – you know, movements. What you're doing is you're trying to learn. 
Okay, mm-hmm. you're, whether your body learns or your brain learns, it's all the same fucking thing. You're just learning something new. Mm-hmm. And if I were to, if I wanted to learn a new language, okay, and you talk to anybody who, who's ever learned another language, the most effective way to learn a new language is to immerse yourself in an environment where people speak that language. Mm-hmm. It's far more effective than taking hardcore learning classes, you know, one hour, two hour classes a day. It's much more, uh, you learn much better if you're just kind of exposed to it throughout the day because it's, your, it's, it's where you're at. You're in, the, you're in that country. And even though you're speaking English, you hear a lot of French still and you're exposed to it. Your brain learns better that way. The body learns better that way as yeah. well. So Isn't rather that than- interesting that we have such a disconnect to that? So we think that just by doing this like occasionally or just in the very beginning, you're just going to like absorb all of that. Like your body's going to respond uh, exactly to that that same protocol every time, well, even though you haven't really gone through the the part where you really have to teach it to do that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think people think of like, oh my god, I got to get better mobility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dedicate uh, one hour, three days a week yeah. to working on mobility, which sounds like a lot, right? If you're if you're talking, to, if, if if you hear that, you think, wow, yeah. that person's really committed. They're dedicating one hour, uh, you know, three days a week just to stretching and mobility. And it's way better than nothing. You're definitely going to get benefits way better than nothing. But it will not compare to the individual who just throughout the day fucks around with mobility. Mm -hmm. You don't need to dedicate an hour of intense mobility. It's just literally 10 times during the day while I'm doing something, I get and sit in a squat. Yeah. Or, you know, I sit in this position that I'm stretching my hip yeah. or I put myself in a position where I have to support myself just works on that mobility. Or you hover poo. Yeah, that exactly. That <clears throat> makes so much so much bigger of a difference. And I'm, you know, watching you do that, Adam, I'm starting to do that now. And it's like, fuck, it's like night and day. Like, I don't have to even dedicate an hour to it at all. No, it's not that. I just do it throughout the day. It's not even that. It's not daunting at all. It's not. uh, It doesn't need to be this. Uh, it doesn't need to be this huge session or this workload. Yeah, super structured. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, um, last night, and, and it's such a common question, right? So last night when we were talking to this group, you know, the girl raised her hand and she's like, okay, well, you know, what are what are some, you know, simple things that I can do and, you know, how fast can I do? Like, it's like everybody wants to know, like, how how little can I do with this, and you know how see fast the, how yeah. fast am I going to get fixed? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And how fast fast am I going to get fixed? And uh, Brink made a really good point of saying that listen, if if you're if you're dealing with aches and pains, and and you know something isn't right with your body, um, and yet you have this passion for running, or you have this passion for lifting weights, or you know this passion for a sport that you love to play, and you're like, okay, you know, Adam, what do I need to do? to, you know, fix this while I'm, you know, playing, you know, what do I, what, what is it? And the, the real answer is that, you know, if you really care about getting rid of the pain and learning to move better, then that needs to become the priority. And then everything else you kind of fit into that. And I think that's where we go wrong first is that becomes the mentality is where we don't want to interrupt Mm-hmm. You know what we're currently doing that we love to do so much. You want to maintain whatever performance you have, and you don't want to see any numbers yeah. drop ever. And and when in fact, if you were willing to go through the process of allowing some of these metrics to kind of fall a bit to really build and fortify your joints and range of motion and strength in these ranges of motion, you come back, you exceed you know those numbers. But That's you, you're, the you're not going to be able to exceed it if you don't. You know, if you're not willing to compromise, that's that. the irony in the yeah. whole thing. The irony is, if you stop, you know, doing all your intense training, so that you could dedicate your time um, to working on, you know, correcting imbalances or <clears throat> you know, eliminating pain or improving mobility. The irony is, at the end of it all, at the end of the long cycle, when you go back to your intense training and you get back into the, you know, getting performance, also, you're gonna you're gonna end up better off. From a performance standpoint, anyway, well, that's it, the irony, and it's really, if you really think about it, gentlemen, it's actually a poor relationship to exercise. Absolutely, it's, when when yeah. when you someone tells you, "Hey, listen, 
you need to dedicate the next four weeks to all you're going to do is correctional exercise and mobility work to fix the fact, you know, to work on the fact that your back bothers you, your hip bothers you, or to work on your mobility. And the person freaks out like, I can't not like lift heavy for a month, or I you can't not hit it right on the head. It's with a that. bad relationship to it's, exercise. It's awareness. It's no different than the the debate we got into when it's talking about nutrition and the aware with the levels of awareness. The same concept is true with training and taking care of your body. People just, they wanted to, and, and Brink talked about it last night too, like everyone's got this, we all have this pain or, or nagging issue that we have that's on a zero to 10 scale and it may only be a one to three on you right now because you can still go about your day and do these other things, but it's there and it's just a matter of you being aware of it or ignoring it and continue doing all the things you're doing until it gets to a point where you can't ignore it anymore. And then yeah. now, you, which is what I feel like people do with food. It's like you have this food addiction or you have this this food issue and you keep doing shit until all of a sudden the doctor says, hey, guess what? You have diabetes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or hey, guess what? This is this is shutting down on you or this is blocked now. Mm-hmm. And now you got to fix this. Then all of a sudden that we have our first first bit of awareness like, oh, fuck. I do have oh, a problem. Yeah. I do have but a problem. But I still like that, so can I get yeah. a pill? So the, the, the trick is for all of us to become more aware way before we get ourselves into these major issues. If you already have these little things that you're, these little nuances that you're noticing about your movement and your body now, start addressing them now so they don't become this thing that limits you from doing basic movements later. And I'll tell you right now, if you're not squatting, and you're not squatting because it hurts. It's not the squat that's hurting you. It's you that's hurting you, and you need to address that. There's your first step of awareness. Stop neglecting that movement. You don't. And in fact, if you can't squat right now, then that should be the main focus of your workout. It's 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 it would be no different. Look, it's it's imagine right now if you just all of a sudden couldn't walk. Would that become a priority of yours over everything else? You better fucking believe it. Like all of a sudden, if you lost your ability to walk, you're like, I am dedicating some serious time. We'll look at Dr. To, Terry Walls. To, right. To learning how to walk, right? Yeah. Well, squatting is right up there. It's right up there in terms of being a fundamental movement of the body. And if you can't sit in a squat, you should definitely dedicate and prioritize some time to be able to sit in that squat because... What, what I'm learning on a personal level now, I'm learning this, I knew this uh, objectively, but I didn't experience it on a personal level just because, probably because I kept myself in a little bit of the dark, right? There was a little bit of me that still remained in the dark because I still like to squat heavy weight. I still like to be able to pull my 500 pounds off the floor. I still like to do all those things. But now I'm realizing that the, my inability to be able to sit in a squat was actually impacting all everything. It was impacting how I worked out. It was imp- impacting how I felt when I moved, when I sat. And like what Adam's talking about in terms of paying being around a one or a three and then, oh, now it's at a six. I got to fix it. Oh, it's back down to a three now. I'm cool. Like, why are we okay with that? Why are we okay with, you know, setting us a, a low, such a low standard where, okay, now it doesn't hurt as bad. I can get about my day. Like, how awesome would it be to just not have it at all? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? How right. great would it be to never feel that pain? How great would it be to get into a movement and just get into it? Well, or you're just, just yeah, and I think there's less business around that. You know what I mean? The business around pain is is definitely around like what can treating it, yeah, right treating away. it, and then and then putting you right back in the mix. And that's that's the mentality that we've always had, especially with athletes. And you know, I'll tell you what, dedicating uh, your changing the focus of your goals. This is key now. If you're one of those people that's got kind of a poor relationship to exercise, like I did, and probably still do a little bit, to where. It's very difficult for me to stop the heavy lifting so I can focus on other things because I feel like, oh no, I'm going to lose the strength or, you know, that's my favorite thing to do or whatever. What you got to do, what helps me is to change my goal, change the focus of my goal. So now I'm not even thinking about strength. All I'm thinking about is improving control range of motion. I'm improving mobility. And now that I'm focusing on that particular goal and I see progress there, it becomes really fucking fun. It becomes a blast. And the, and here's a side effect that I'm noticing now is the fact that because I can get into deeper ranges of motion, it sucks saying this, by the way, because it, it's like, duh, I've talked about this a million times, but I just ignored it for myself. I actually build more muscle. Like I notice now my legs are starting to, I'm not lifting with nearly as much weight in the squat because I'm really focusing on just trying to sit in that squat with weight. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking in the mirror when I'm flexing my legs and stuff and I'm like, holy shit, they actually look a little bit better. Like I haven't lost, not only have I not lost muscle, but I'm actually starting to see what seems to be 
better muscle development. Well, certain ranges haven't experienced any kind of resistance. That's it. That's know? it. I'm, I'm making my muscles like stronger. Ignoring, yeah, mm-hmm. certain parts of what your muscles function is capable of. And we need to talk about, you know, what range of motion, uh, the difference between range of motion and controlled range of motion. This is something that Dr. Brink blew my mind in when we first met him in his office. He put me in uh, a 90-90 position, which is it's a, it's a hip, external, ex- internal rotation of uh, of the hip so one side is externally rotated one side is internally rotated i'm sitting on the floor and he's telling me to lift my back foot off the floor while keeping my knee down on the floor so I'm, I'm, like, uh... I'm internally rotating my <laughs> hips even more and to do it with my own my own power and strength and i could get off the floor maybe an inch at the most which and with lots of like ah oh, lots of strain and tension right and he says, well, why, you know, he tells me, he says, why can't you get any higher? And I'm like, well, I just, I don't have that range of motion. And he goes, no, you have that range of motion. He takes my foot with his hand and he pulls it up. Like a foot. Like pulls it way the fuck <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, like and it a... felt really weird. I'm looking at it and I felt disconnected like, to my leg. Are you breaking me? Yeah, I didn't feel connected to my leg. It was like, oh, whoa, this is a range of motion I didn't even know I had. Yeah. And he says, now try and hold it up here as I let go. Cause mm-hmm. he's holding my foot up there. He lets go of, it, of my foot and I can't, I can't hold it. And he says, okay, Sal, he goes, the range of motion exists. It's there. The problem is you don't have control in that range of motion. You have no strength within that range of motion. And it was like a light bulb went off in my head. Like, holy shit, I have way more range of motion than I think I do. What I'm lacking is strength mm-hmm. within that range of motion There's and no control. And that's the important thing. Range of motion is nothing without control. It means nothing unless your job is to, you know, fit yourself inside of a small box and just relax and sit in there and you're some kind of a, you know, strength performer like that. But if your job is to move daily or perform in a sport or work out, range of motion means nothing unless you have control. Otherwise, if you can't get into it, or if you do get into it and then you have no strength, that's in, that's instability. That's that's an injury waiting to happen. Or if you can't get into it yourself, well, then it doesn't even matter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think this frequent getting myself into these positions with tension, like what I'm doing throughout the day now is I'm getting myself into a squat, uh, a bodyweight squat. I'm trying to sit in that squat and re- rather than relax in that squat, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to kind of stay there with control right now because mm-hmm. it's new for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm taking my feet and rather than letting them pronate, I'm actively trying to stay more on the outsides of my feet. I'm trying to press my knees out. I'm trying to press my chest mm-hmm. through, even though I'm not getting very far with it because obviously well, my mobility is not good. Well, that's an interesting thing once you start really like identifying how much pressure or where you're applying pressure with your feet and like I see like my big toe wanting to lift up and you know and and my feet pronating a little bit I'm like like self-correcting as I'm as I'm getting dropping into a deeper stance in in the squat but it's like if you can really start to um, slow down and 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 figure out what your body is already kind of doing and compensating uh, it's interesting because then you you really can understand wow, like if I just focus on grounding myself better mm-hmm. and, and working on these little articulations with my feet, it, it's, it makes a massive difference. Like you don't feel those little twingy aches and, and pains that shoot up your leg. So, so Jessica is uh, very proficient in uh, range of motion and flexibility type training. Uh, she traveled for uh, and worked for, for four years, the Cirque du Soleil. And so she had the amazing ability, uh, excuse me, the, the opportunity, I should say, of training with the best in the world when it came to uh, flexibility, mobility, tension, control, because these are all contortionists and, you know, performers that do just ridiculous feats of, uh, you know, human movement, right? And so she really took to and enjoyed silks training. So for the <coughs> listeners who don't know what silks are, it's those big, massive pieces of fabric that hang from you know high point in the ceiling, and then a performer will climb it, and then wrap their body with it, and support themselves in the splits, and do back bends and twist and hang upside down, and it's really beautiful, it's really amazing. But from a physical standpoint, when you analyze what they're doing, is you, you literally have to have ridiculous ranges of motion with control because you're supporting yourself on these silks. You can't relax on the floor in a stretch or whatever. You have to support yourself, and so. She has incredible uh, flexibility, but good control within that flexibility. Like she can get in the split, but the splits 
where she'll support herself one foot on one silk and one foot on the other silk, mm -hmm. which is different than just sitting on the floor in uh, in a split where you can just relax, right? Oh, it's well, it's what makes uh, Juji so impressive, impressive exactly. that people don't realize. It's like, it's one thing this guy is doing the splits. It's another thing that he's doing it between two chairs and holding a fucking hundred and something pounds yes, over his head. You, That's you, insane. You have strength within that range of motion. So when I talk to her, and here's the thing, like once when you're doing something, sometimes you don't realize what you're doing. And then when you think about it uh, objectively and you try to you know verbalize it, then you start to realize, oh shit, this is why the trainers had me do this, and this yeah. is why the. So what she tells me is, so she, they they had these Russian trainers there and Russian silks, uh, you know, these Eastern Bloc silks trainers, and they take her through these just gnarly stretch sessions, where they would themselves put her in a stretch, so she's passive in it. So first they would get the range of motion, mm. but then when she was in that range of motion, they would tell her to do two things: a Try to hold your leg in that position. So let's say I'm holding you in a hamstring stretch mm -hmm. real fucking deep. And at first you're relaxing just so we can get there. And then they tell her, now you hold it here and flex your quad and pull with your hip flexor. And they would also tell her to oppose the stretch. Now push into my hand and go back and forth and do all these different things. She said it was painful as fuck. It was horrible. But she went from being an extremely inflexible individual who couldn't touch her toes, and now she's like one of the most flexible people I know. Yeah. And as she's explaining this to me, and as I'm learning all the stuff with Brink and all the stuff that we're doing with mobility and how we, you know, when we put together Prime, I'm realizing that they were training strength within ranges of yeah. motion. Well, like it, yeah. that's exactly what they were doing. That's exactly it, and it's it, it's basically how I've always like I've wondered how to explain. Uh, a guy doing like the gymnastic rings and like how, why that was always so impressive to me was because you'd see this guy with his arms all the way out, like in a crucifix pose. And then he goes and flips upside down he pulls himself up like seamlessly. Everything just looks so smooth. I'm like, how, like, I, I know just like doing a pull up and then trying to transition into a muscle up or whatever, like that's, in itself is like it's incredible the amount of strength that you need for that but like more than that like they're training themselves on like crazy ranges of motion and in applying insane amount of force on demand and there's a way to train for that so. yes so here's a great example let's say you have tight hamstrings we'll just use hamstrings because everybody feels like they have tight hamstrings and throughout the day you, you want to apply this kind of frequency principle that we're talking about where you just throughout the day you practice, you're learning, you're, you're teaching your body how to become uh, more, how to gain more range of motion with control in the hamstrings. So the typical, the average person may think that what they would do is they just stretch their hamstring statically. Like I'm just going to put my leg up on the table and just kind of sit there and relax and let the hamstring stretch. And you will get more range of motion that way, but you won't get control. Here's how you would get control doing something like that. So let's say I do that. Let's say I put my leg up on the table and I get into a stretch. First, I get into the stretch and I relax for a second and try and sit in there. Then while I'm in the stretch, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pull my leg up while I'm in that stretch and hold that for 20 seconds. Then I'm going to relax for a second. Now I'm going to push down into the table. I'm not moving. My body's not moving. I'm just creating tension. Now I'm pushing down into the table while I'm holding the stretch. Then the next thing I do is I point my toes while I'm in that stretch and tense my quads. Then the next thing I do is I pull my toes back while I'm in that stretch and tense my quads. And then I rotate my leg and then I flex all while stretching the hamstring. What I'm doing is I'm creating tension in different positions. And what that does is it builds, it, it creates that neurological pattern, that, that, that strength. It gives me strength within those positions. Your signal gets louder. It gets much louder. And all I'm doing is I'm literally, I'm looking at a grand total of 30 seconds to a minute and a half of doing this throughout my day, and I do this maybe three, four, five times a day. So you're li you're literally dedicating a grand total of, you know, ten minutes during your day doing this. And so far, I've done this. I've been doing you know stuff like this way faster progress than spending thirty minutes of stretching yeah. at the end of my workouts. It's really blowing me uh, away. I have. I don't think there's been a day where I've spent thirty minutes to an hour just stretching or mobility work. It does. You don't need to. You just and mm. and frequency wins. Uh, I'm far better off doing it three, four times for five or 10 minutes throughout the day than I am one time really long, you know, circling back to you know, the squat. So my best friend, I, I got a chance to hang out with him this weekend. I hadn't seen him in a while. And uh, he's recently got back into lifting and working out. And he's like, yeah, I know you really motivated me to get back to squatting. And he's like in squatting deep. And so you know, he told me, he's like, I, I can't quite squat with the barbell really deep. So he tells me he's been using the Smith machine and squatting all the way down to the floor. 
and I go, well, you'll be way better off doing no weight on your back and getting your mechanics down and working on that. So I, I want to be clear about this. So, you know, here we are telling you everybody that, okay, you need to squat. Squatting is so important. It's the king of all exercises. If you can't squat, get to the point where you can't squat. Now, the problem that is, yeah, problem with a lot of people is they hear that and they go like, okay, well, I trust mind pump. I feel like I need to get, so they go, right, I'm going to just start, they're somebody who stopped squatting because it hurts them. And now they just say, okay, I'm going to start squatting. Yeah, I'm glad you're going here. Because mind pump tells me I need to squat. And then they just, and then they start pushing their range of motion because they know that we've been saying that you need to get deeper in your squat. Well, it doesn't work that way. Like, like Sal's talking about his progression that, well, He's been working on this for three plus months. Shit, I was working on it for over six to eight months before you could you and and you can just go back and look at my my Instagram. Go all the way back in the last year and, and pay attention to a squat video I did last year and look at the squat squats now. But that's been a gradual progression over the last year. I didn't just go from hey barely being able to break ninety to all of a sudden sitting in the baby no because, baby position because you didn't have strength in that range of motion. Yes. You would have hurt yourself. So my process looks more like looked more like this. Like uh, at fir first thing I would do is I would use TRX straps so I could balance on something, and then my goal was to try to get down to the bottom of a squat position, which was very hard for me. It was painful. Yeah. Um, and I would just practice that, or I'd use I'd put my hands on a couch or something so I could reach forward and get balance. And I started with my heels elevated to start with. Then I started lowering my heels to the point where I could go flat. Then I started practicing. With uh, without having to hold on to anything, and I could only get so far. Then I practiced. Now, then I was able to to, to actually get down to the bottom without you know any weight. Mm -hmm. Then I would do it with the bar. Meanwhile, normally I can squat with 300 pounds. I could go up to three plates, and that's what I can work out to. Meanwhile, what I'm doing is I'm slowly scaling the weight down in my squat and going deeper and deeper and deeper in my range of motion. So I went from three plates to two and a quarter with a little bit of a deeper squat, to two plates with a deeper squat, to one and a quarter with a deeper squat, to then I went all the way down to the bar to be able to get all the way to the bottom of squat, to for the first time uh, since this process began, I have squatted with uh, 135 pounds, but at the bottom where I'm totally getting down to the bottom. And I'm not allowing myself to go any heavier until I can get really fucking good with 135 and I'm doing five reps. Like 135, I can press with my arms above my head. Like that's not a heavy weight. Uh, I could throw it if I wanted to. But to get down into that position with good tension control within that range of motion, there's a good 12 inches or so where that 135 is about as much as I can handle. Once I get out of that 12 inches, I can I can hammer it up, no problem. But that's the point. The point is I'm, work, I'm using – the weight is matching my worst – uh, you know, part of my rep, which is that bottom position. I'm not trying to go as heavy as I possibly yeah, can. The it point matter. is, you can handle 12 inches. That's, <laughs> that's the point. With 135 well, pounds. Well, here's some. There, here's an important point to make too: is that there, there's three major areas that um, anybody that I've helped with this that we have to address. And uh, whether you address all of them together and you make slow progress uh, towards this really deep squat or you address one at a time and, and get really good at it, which is kind of the, the, the way I went at this. So uh, I'll start with you have the your thoracic region, you have your hips, and then you have your ankles. Those three are typically the three main areas that limit people from getting them into this really deep squat. And, you know, I was just talk, uh, Everett was at our seminar last night and he's like, he was felt so inspired to like work on his squat depth because he kind of stops right at 90 degrees and he can't get all the way down. He's like, man, he's like, I really want to get to the point after listening to you guys and Brink talk about how important it is to be able to connect and go all the way down there. And he's like, you know, so I'm going to start squatting barefoot and doing this. I'm like, hold on, dude, pump your brakes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you've been wearing high heel shoes, squatting and just getting <laughs> to 90. You don't need to take your shoes off and try and go all the way down. And I said, you know, learn from my mistake. I got so excited about my progress in my squat that I did this exact same thing. I'm like, oh, I'm done with my belt. I'm done with my shoes. I'm squatting barefoot all the way down. And then I hurt myself because I wasn't ready. And it wasn't even a lot of weight. It was just, I wasn't ready that for that. So 
it, w- once the hips get opened up enough to where you get down 90, well, then you also are going to have the thoracic region that's, that's, going, right that's going to round forward mm-hmm. still. And then you're also going to have a limiting factor with your ankles. It's rarely ever just like just hips and then you're good. Like normally if your hips have been really tight, you haven't been getting down that position. You haven't asked your ankles to have to have that much travel. And then you also haven't asked your your uh, spine to stay in that neutral position when you get that deep in the thoracic region. So each one of these are going to be limiting factors to having that beautiful, perfect, deep barefoot squat. And so make sure that you're uh, either one addressing all of those or you make progress in one and then you, you then you go to another area. You work really well and consistent towards, you know, range of motion there. And then, and then together you'll finally get it's taken me, like I said, a whole year before I could sit in this position. And I'm still not all the way there. I just somebody lo- everyone loves to point out like a. Uh, yeah, you know, anytime you post anything on Instagram and you're you're somebody like us who are sharing information, people everybody likes to write away. Hey, that's aren't your hips coming up too that's fast? Not perfect, your yeah. yeah, that's not, yeah, no fucking yeah, shit, man. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm very aware of all my yeah. imbalances. No, it's funny because you're listening to uh, a few meatheads here. Justin has been focusing on mobility and movement way longer uh, and more in depth than I have. I did, <clears throat> and more than Adam uh, did because Adam was competing for a while. He just didn't do it anymore. Yeah. And so, but you're listening to, you know, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm, I am not by any means proficient at all when it comes to mobility and range of motion, but I am, uh, very, uh, I am knowledgeable on the effects and what it's hap- what's happening with the body and what it's doing with the central nervous system. And I'm applying it on myself now, which is kind of cool. It's cool because I get to go through it myself, mm-hmm. which puts me in a good position, in a unique <clears throat> position to be able to communicate kind of what may be happening as you're trying to do this. Well, oh yeah. You, always, you get a lot of cool coaching kind of cues, like as you go through it yourself. And, and for me too, that's where like I found like tools and different techniques that I really responded to. And I was like stoked on it. And that's what kind of led me down uh, this sort of pathway towards uh, getting further into mobility, using sticks, using props, things like that, like getting into stuff like the Dumphy squat where we, you know, I'm using these kind of leverage points to uh, it, it automatically, your your body tends to, to, to tense up the way that, you know, you want to be able to recruit that process. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a helpful way to kind of direct uh, your hips down and and to be able to to sort of gain that recruitment and that response that you're looking to achieve. This is probably why uh, <clears throat> the biggest the, the the we get messages from people right who enroll in our in our programs you know maps and you know whether it's aesthetic prime performance anabolic you know whatever and the ones that people are always email us and go holy shit I'm totally surprised are usually the aesthetic focused uh, individuals who do end up doing maps performance or maps prime because they go into maps performance uh, and these are bo- these are bodybuilders physique competitors uh, people who just want to look good you know bikini competitors whatever they go into maps performance because they trust us right they listen to us on the show and they're like mm-hmm. okay I was the least exp- I, you know I did maps anabolic I did maps aesthetic I was the least excited about doing mass performance because I know it's mobility and performance based, but you guys kept talking about it. So I gave it a shot and holy shit, I'm blown away. Like, I can't believe I, my squat is better. My deadlift is you know better. I'm building more muscle. And it's like, it's this wonderful side effect <laughs> of improving ranges of motion with control. Yeah. It makes such a huge fucking difference in the way you look too. So it's not, it's Absolutely. not just about moving and feeling better. Like I'm telling you right now, working on these things even if you could care less about being able to sit in a full squat or whatever, mm-hmm. you're going to build more muscle and look better. You're just and, more well-rounded. And the message we're getting, we're, messages we're getting from people is that they're blown away yeah. when they do performance or prime, which is also a, I guess you could put it in that category of mobility. Um, priming your workouts, boy, does that make a huge fucking difference too. Mm-hmm. And being able to just be connected to you know, deeper and deeper ranges of motion. Well, somebody uh, asked us recently, like how we stay motivated. You know, if you guys have been lifting for so long, like... How do you stay motivated to to train day in, day out? And what does that look like? And, you know, I, the tip that I gave or for me, this is this is how I do that is I find areas uh, of improvement that I need to work on, whether it be a simple movement like a squat or overall mobility in an area. And I set goals for that like I want to be able to do this, like I want to be able to do this and I want to do it well. And it, it gives me something to focus on and it gives me a new goal that's not uh, scale driven, 
uh, the mirror driven, you know, or based off of how much weight I need to be lifting, which there's nothing wrong with those goals too. I love going after those too. That's what yeah. drove me to compete. Dude, let's be honest though. We've done that for decades. Yeah. You know, so this is something that's outside of that, which is actually, you know, it's exciting in its own way. Yeah. No, I think it's important. I think all of them are important. I, I learned so much. Uh, in my journey uh, to becoming an IFBB pro, that whole journey of being so focused on how I look taught me so many things and I, and I totally appreciate it and I'm over it. You know, I'm over it for right now as far as like competing at the highest level because there's other things that are important to me and like I'm totally enjoying this moving better. And I know me too, like I'll keep working at it until I feel like Man, I feel great. And I already do feel really great. I, I feel the best I've felt in my life in a very, very long time. And I don't feel like I, I'm way off from that aesthetic version of me. Like, I feel like that's so close that I could be there within four to six weeks, no problem. So for me to have a, an aesthetic physique right now and moving the way uh, I, I'm moving right now and to be pain free like I am right now, I mean, I feel fantastic. But then I know me too. Like, Something I'll get, you know, I'll get a hair, a hair up my butt or whatever. And then sooner or later, I'll be, I'll be focused on something else. And to me, that's how I keep going and how I enjoy this whole that process. Tickles, by the way, <laughs> I think, I think it's, we, we should probably re recommend that everybody, uh, I don't care how good, how mobile you think you are, how awesome your, your range of motion is or how long you've been working out. I think everybody should probably dedicate an entire phase of training on just, improving ranges of motion with control on mobility on uh, being able to move better I think everybody should take anywhere between three weeks to 12 weeks or longer of a workout phase where that is your only goal whether you're an athlete or you're aesthetic driven or you're just health driven just do that you know just phase it put it in make that the primary goal where you forget about everything else. You're not worried about how much weight you're lifting. You're not worrying about aesthetics. You're not worrying about the pump or anything like that. All you're focused on are, are those things. And I promise you, I promise you, you're going to come out of that phase. Your mind is going to be fucking blown. You're going to go back to your other phase and your mind's going to be blown again. Your body's going to respond in different ways and new ways. It is going to be the, the shock that your body needs to start progressing again. I hate that when they say that. Shock your body into, you know. Shock. That's rea in reality that'll that'll do it. That'll probably do it. Like if you've plateaued forever and you're just not seeing any progress and you're frustrated as hell, phase in a nice, you know, 3 to 12 week period of just mobility, range of motion training of just that kind of functional type of work and then go back to what you were doing before. And see what happens. Well, real real soon here, uh, you guys are uh, we're getting ready to wrap up our our focus series that we are doing on our YouTube channel. So if you guys aren't subscribed uh, to the YouTube channel, Mind Pump uh, TV. So Mind Pump TV on YouTube. If you subscribe to it, every day we're releasing free videos that are short, three to five minute, little bit of uh, tidbits of information. And we're about to transition into uh, mobility videos. So if this is something that um, you know you need to work on. Uh, you maybe you don't own any programs, or you can't afford a program right now. But you're looking for more help, more tips. This is why we created the YouTube channel. We want to try and help out as many people as we possibly can, even if you're in a position that you can't afford one of the programs. If you can't get Prime, you can't get Maps Performance right now, which ideally would be. Uh, I mean, this would be most ideal for everybody because then you can figure out what's uh, best for your body. The next best thing after that is at least take the free information that we're, we're just start applying some yeah of and start applying to some of them and that's that was the advice I gave last night to somebody is like well listen you know go through these these movements and you're you're gonna know you're gonna know when you get into them the ones you really struggle the ones you're really struggling to perform are probably the ones you need to work on and and work towards them and get good at them and don't think intensely don't think okay i'm not good at this so, oh, i'm gonna stretch as hard as i can and intensify it as hard as i possibly can and do it for a long period of time no, no just, just learn them yes exactly learn them get down in that position do it for a few minutes move on Keep come back practicing. yeah come back later in the day do it again for a couple minutes move on come back again during the day do it again for a few minutes and just keep doing that and i, I pay attention literally to what how much you how different you feel in like a week's time 
Like mm. it's, this is not one of those things where, yeah. hey, it's put pretty, it, it's, you'll notice them. Yeah, yeah you it's do. not. It's not like building instant. Your mu- body like, loves it. Yeah, it's not like what we have to do to to burn a bunch of fat or build muscle. It's not like that. It's amazing. Like if you actually do it like three, like literally take a like take one or two moves you're not good at that we're gonna post up there, or if you own Prime, one or two that you've already noticed. Uh, you are challenging. Do them two to three times a day, every day for one to two weeks. Report back to me. Guaranteed, you will feel and, and see a significant difference in that short amount of time of just applying that. So, and when people see that and feel that, I feel like that that, that light bulb goes off for everybody. Like, wow, this isn't that difficult. It just takes takes consistency of continually to apply that because you're training you're it's you're training on a neurological level we're training patterning right now it's not a strength thing it's not like you're trying to build a bunch of muscle burn a bunch of fat mm-hmm. you're just trying to cha- train that body to get connected mm-hmm. so stop training and start learning listen if you like mind pump leave us a five star rating and review on itunes if we like your review if it's a good one and we pick yours among the others you'll get a free mind pump t-shirt sent to you by mail also, check us out on Instagram at Mind Pump Radio. That's where you can ask uh, ask us questions, and uh, we answer these questions on uh, on our show. You can also find my personal Instagram page at Mind Pump Sal. You can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin, and you can find the Eagle Doug Eggy at Mind Pump Doug. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.